What is up amigos? Today we're talking about the smoke flow visualization. And this is quite a simple technique, but there are a few nuances that need to be perfected. And it is very powerful. It is very underrated and you can find out a lot about the flow just by doing this technique. So in these figures here, we see a bunch of different images showing this flow visualization. So as we've all seen in a lot of different pictures, we have smoke coming in, it goes over an object and then we can visualize what is happening. So for example, in this picture, we see that the airfoil is stalling. It's actually the reverse angle of attack and we get a lot of uh, unsteadiness behind it as well as this, I guess, of chemistry behind the trailing edge. So this airfoil goes over quite steadily. In addition to just having this regular smoke flow visualization, you can also illuminate it. So you can put a laser through it, for example, here, here, and even this picture here, we have a laser sheet going through it and we can illuminate these structures even better. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind when doing this. So the first thing is the particles themselves. So to begin with, if you have a smoke being a generator generating smoke, the particles coming out of the generator will be different sizes and they can range anywhere from like sub micron to hundreds of microns. What size do you want to go for? Should you go for a very small size or very large size? So from a flow physics point of view, the smaller the particle really the better because the smaller the particle is, the more it will follow the flow. Let's take this very simple object here. It's just a regular cylinder and the flow comes along and it hits it. Now the flow is going to go around here and we're probably going to get a Vonkama Street depending on the Reynolds number obviously, but um, we're going to get a Vonkama Street usually and some sort of unsteadiness. The smaller the particles are, the more they'll follow this flow. So you can see there's some flow being circled back around here into this wake. These small particles will come in here. Larger particles won't. They will come around here and they'll just, they'll just fall out of the air and go on another path. And often they'll be affected by gravity even more. So they'll also drop. So when a particle follows the flow well, we call it following the flow faithfully. It's an unusual term, but that word faithful is used across pretty much all seeding particles. So whether that's smoke or if you have even iron ore or whatever that you put into the particle, into the flow, that's uh, these seeding particles, if they follow the flow well, they're following the flow faithfully. And as I mentioned, the smaller the particles are, the better they do this. On the other hand, if the particles are very small, the smaller they get, the less light they will reflect. So if you were to shine a laser sheet through, then you won't get these particles being illuminated as much. Now for regular smoke flow visualization, that isn't such a big deal. It is to some extent, we'll get to that in a second, but for other um, techniques such as LDA and PIV, which use very similar principles in terms of seeding particles, that is an issue. So if you were to use this laser then to do PIV on, for example, not being able to reflect the light well is a major hindrance to your experiments. So that is one thing to keep in mind. So generally speaking for smoke flow visualization and PIV as well, the size of particles you want to go for is from around one micron or even, or even less, let's say 0 0.1 to five microns. About one is usually better, um, but 0 0.1 to five. And the reason is because if you go below 0 0.1, you're not going to get really much illumination at all. If you have a laser going through it or other light sources, above five, the flow, the particles will start to fall out of the flow. And one to five is a pretty good range because one, you're getting pretty good reflectivity from these particles. Now, in terms of how well these particles follow the flow again, it comes down to a term called settling time. So settling time tells us really how long it takes for a particle to settle out of the air. If you have a particle right here, how long will it take for it to drop one meter? Well, if you have a one micron to five micron particle, generally that settling time will be less than one meter per 30 minutes and the smaller the particle goes, the longer it will take to settle one meter. So that's also why we want a lower size as well. Now, in terms of these pictures here, I mentioned before that if you don't have uh, these particles falling the flow very well, you won't get illumination. Now we can see that exactly here in this picture. We can see there are some regions where there aren't any particles. It just seems like there aren't any particles, and that's because there aren't. There's no reflection of this laser. So in this particular case, the smoke has either dissipated too much, there aren't either many particles here, or the particles that were there have now not followed the flow well and they've now fallen out. So there's no particles here. And that comes back to this sphere example. So that brings us to the next point, which is how to seed these flows. You can really just inject the particles anywhere, but there are a couple of things to keep in mind. 
the first thing is where are these particles going to go from there? If I inject the particles up this way from upstream, shooting back into the wake, chances are that the wake is just going to take it, the flow is going to take it and take it downstream, and you're not going to get many particles in this region here. So alternatively, you can shoot it from upstream and in line with the flow, and then they will hopefully follow around and come into this wake. But again, it depends on the size of the particles. And then also we want to make sure that the flow is not going to be affected by this generator shooting the smoke in. For example, if you have the generator here shooting perpendicular to the flow, obviously this part of the wake is then going to be pushed up more and this part's probably going to be pushed up more. So that's going to change the flow physics of the object. So that is a very important point to note where how you're injecting these smoke particles is very important because it can change the flow physics as well as how it's going to see the, the flow. Now, in terms of that idea, there was a guy, really the, the best one ever for flow visualization was this guy called Henri Roulet. Uh, he used to work, I think he's retired now, at Onira, which is the French aerospace uh, industry. Um, and you can see here a quite a few of his different flow visualizations. They're not exactly smoke flow vis, but they do give us really good information and it tells us how to look at things. So you can see here, this is a wing and you have a wing tip here. And the same kind of principle applies where depending on where you inject the flow visualization stuff, you're going to see different things. Here, there are five different colors and they're rolling up into the wingtip vortex. So now you can figure out what is happening here in terms of the flow physics. And again, if you were to inject these dyes very strongly, then that will affect the flow physics. So it's very important to understand that. So coming back to the smoke flow visualization, we covered that the micron size is really important. You want to keep it quite low, below five microns is ideal. Of above about one is good if you're going to illuminate it with a laser. In terms of how you inject it, the best case scenario is always when you inject it in line with the free stream flow and really in the center line, but that will then potentially result in particles not making it to these really hard to reach places, which is what we saw in the other picture where uh, there were some regions which didn't have any laser reflecting the light. So you then need to come up with some other ideas. Perhaps if you were to have a tube going up through this structure and then coming out at some point and making sure that the flow coming out of here is not really being pushed out. It's not like a positive pressure. It's more neutral pressure compared to this wake. That way it's just kind of being released steadily as opposed to shooting out and changing the wake structure as well. So that is in this video. If you liked it, make sure to click the like and subscribe button. And we'll see this one. Peace, amigos.